Hi everyone, welcome to Dusty Shop Collectibles, here today in Margate at the opening day of Hornby's Wonderworks. Yes yeah, so indeed, this is the opening day, it's 30th of uh, October uh, 2023 and the Hornby Visitor Centre is no more. Um, it's been completely refurbished into the Wonderworks. So uh, let's go in and take a look. There's certainly a vast difference. Completely transformed. So before I go in and take you for a walk around the museum, let me just give you an idea of the admission prices. So if you are a Hornby Collector Club member, you still can get in for free. Um, I'm just looking across, so an adult admission is five pounds, children five to 15, two pound 50. So not bad at all, quite good value, I think. I think what I'll do is I'll have a look around the shop in a minute. Let's go and have a look in the museum first of all. <coughs> Right, we'll start over here. Let's start with uh, Pocha. I'm not sure how you actually pronounce it. I think some people pronounce it Pocha, don't they? And some Pocha, but uh, I've always known it as Pocha, whether it's right or wrong. Beautiful models. It's F40. It's still come up for sale now and again. Not really got anywhere to put it, unfortunately. I would have fiat there. This is the latest incarnation. I think I spoke about this on one of the Tamiya videos. This is the, uh, the JPS Lotus. Beautiful model. Look at the detailing on the engine. So before you used to follow sort of a you know a corridor um, layout, small little rooms. Now a lot more open plan and open space. And obviously, star attraction right in the middle here is this. Uh, this uh, let me just check what it is. A Ferret Scout car Mark II. Sorry, I should have known that. This section here, how it's made, again all to do with the uh, Hawker or Poacher exhibit so uh, these are the Lotus uh, 72 technical drawings and then 3D prints again of the Lotus 72 the prototype uh, 3D scan data uh, Lotus 72 monocoque and uh, the creative version down there Nice, nice exhibit. Okay, we're now on to uh, the scale electric story. And again, there's a section here on how it's made. So, uh, research, design, decoration, decorated samples. Prototypes, the CAD, more detail on the CAD there. So it says here, once the 3D print is approved, we then start creating the tool. This takes around 10 weeks. They arrive unpainted and unmade, and we go through about three to three rounds of these fixing errors and running issues before we start seeing painted samples in this cabinet of various test shots. So these are basically um, first runs of the injection mold tool and then down here this was in the previous museum this is uh, uh, one of the old wooden models from uh, from years ago 
long before uh, CAD was ever involved in computer aided engineering. There's a rather nice uh, skeletrix layout here. Depicting a scene from Margate, which is rather nice. We've got the uh, the block of flats. If you know Margate, you'll, you'll be familiar with the. Um, I can't think of the name of the house. I can't remember what it's called. It's uh, right in the right on the seafront in the centre of Margate. Obviously there. And uh, the, uh, the Margate clock, which will come a firm fixture with Hornby. I've seen I did a video of uh, making the Hornby factory for my layout. We've actually got a small representation on this uh, skeletric setup. Dreamland. Let's try and get some shots of the cars. There's other bits on this uh, scale electric layer. We've got the Lido there, very famous in Margate, the Turner Contemporary Centre. This over here is the uh, Tourist Information Building. And, uh, there's the Old Kent Market, which is right on the seafront opposite the uh, Turner Contemporary. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic job. This section is the scale electric story. You see the uh, these vintage models. Down the bottom there, getting more into the 19 sort of 80s, I guess. Let's come back up the top, the van walls here. And uh, the Vista Jaguar. I think we've got one of those van walls somewhere. You can see the uh, scale electric uh, packaging from back in the day. We've got the, uh, the starting mechanism over there, the grandstands. First of the sort of Formula One cars coming in. The top here, the Alfa Romeo. Oh, the classic control tower there. Um, yeah, and the current stand as well. Over to the side here, the record of scale electric sounds. And I think I pointed this out before, the U steer. Uh, controller, have no idea how that works. Never seen one of those before, apart from in this museum. March six wheeler, and then down the bottom there, the classic humpback bridge, and um, another grandstand over the other side, and the first of the electric starts. This one, this one, of course, being wind up. And the second part of the story of scale electrics continuing. So we've got here uh, some beautiful Jordans, though, look. Looking more into the sort of, I guess, early 2000s here. More of the models of today. James Bond. Some of that classic, it's classic packaging. I mean, I remember that from uh, way back when. Got the two Williams here on the track. The Bentley's beautiful there, look at That's really, really nice. Not look out for one of those, that's a very nice model. Classic Goodyear Bridge. And some of the collector's editions. There's uh, the Monaco 92 set with uh, Senna, and I think that was Mansell. And then these two tin plate, I think these are the tin plate ones that were released a few years ago. And uh, just reviewing the arc system down the bottom there. Right, the Skeletrics are the movies. Very vintage Jamie Pond set. It's lovely to see some new items in here, not just uh, the previous collection sort of re re reprofiled or repositioned, re if you like. So I don't believe that was in the museum before. And certainly this. Uh, Batman set down the bottom here with the tumbler, although that was in the cabinet, it wasn't open, so it's nice to see that. We've got the newer Batman items there. And of course the, uh, the three versions of the uh, Back to the Future car, and uh, Knight Rider, Kit and Car, Blues Brothers, Starsky and Hutch, and the Ninja Turtles over the back there. Again. The Bond collection is particularly nice. 
and uh, some sort of cartoon ranges at the bottom there and uh, micro scale electrics DC universe set and then here we've got Mr Bean I've not seen that fab before that's a superb model I like that indeed um, only fools and horses obviously quite a connection to Margate and another micro scale electric set here from James Bond this uh, cabinet in the middle here is quite nice to look at it's just got a range of cars displayed quite nicely in sort of a glass box you see a uh, colour prototypes there or transparent cars we've got a gold version of a looks like an F40 got more transparent cars there I don't know if they're specials or and then I'm trying to get the right view here there's vintage scale electrics along here and then uh, the top sort of cube if I stand back you see what I mean it's sort of mounted on the top of the case we've got uh, a series of F1 cars obviously a very modern McLaren there and uh, these recently released um, Lotus from uh, I think it's a Senna driving that I can't remember and the JPS another new release and then around this side indeed the cars carry on so at the bottom here got a range of different cars a superb tumbler and then at the top here yeah some more cars really nice display right so greatest hits now this I do like so it's broken into three sections most valuable bestseller and most iconic so most valuable so most valuable is the uh, Ugantics I don't know I've not seen that one before so if anybody knows about that one please do let me know bestsellers were the Porsches I can fully understand that I've certainly had one of those when I was younger and we had the Le Mans well, I think it was a friend who had the Le Mans set a huge huge track and then the most iconic well obviously we've got the JPS range totally agree with that the minis and uh, some of the uh, classic touring cars so the Bugatti Type 59 which is the C70 C95 is considered one of the most precious replicas of the legendary racing car the model was created in 1963 and only a few hundred were produced so uh, yeah it's in excess of £5,000 it says here and then for the Porsche Porsche 911 Turbo a timeless icon of speed and precision that dominated the tracks since it was released in 1977 and then down at the bottom here is the Mark 1 Escort JP Lotus with a classic mini the most uh, iconic of all time please vote really nice nice touch I like that indeed okay we have uh, an airfix wall and uh, this is just superb and the airfix logo here all the different kits assembled and, and mounted absolutely brilliant and then down the bottom here you've got the space shuttle and the Saturn V and uh, the Concorde model there let me just stand back a little bit and get a picture of the full wall if I can really really good got an airfix sprue just to the end here with a seat as a sort of photo point yeah very good and again following the trend uh, how it's made section on airfix so uh, research, swatch cards, etc. to look into the research and then uh, evolution of the uh, quick build camper van test shots as before you know injection moulding seeing how they come out the tool and then being assembled down the bottom here is the uh, Spitfire beautiful beautiful model here we can see one of the small injection mould tools and again injection mould tools here some first shots and this is the uh, newly tooled uh, Westland uh, Seeking and a uh, beautiful Mustang yeah really really nice uh, nice display there bit of information as well 
little table here for the youngsters to assemble some models. And in here we talk about some of the uh, the past kits and uh, you know the, the legendary uh, artists who uh, did the boxes. So uh, Roy Cross, his name associated with a lot of the original Airfix boxes. And uh, if we have a look in here, you can see the uh, beach buggy, which I believe has been uh, re-released or is going to be re-released soon. You can see the vintage, actually there it is, it's behind, sitting behind it, the vintage classics, that's the re-release. Got the uh, Saturn V sets at the top there. And then in the case underneath, some other model kits. Got the Bentley uh, four and a half litre supercharged 1930s Bentley there, and the Westland helicopter. There's a few other quite iconic uh, kits in here the Jaguar 420, and the Amphibian. I certainly made one of those when I was younger. Got a couple of Concorde models, and the pretty range there. But at the top here, this is uh, eight, so they had the, this in the cabinet as you walked in before, but uh, they've got a made version. Uh, somebody's done the kit here and uh, that's one that I've always wanted to do a beautiful model Golden Hind and the cabinet under there and then down the bottom the model of the Bismarck again another kit that I made in my childhood the kind of thing this sort of uh, cube in the to display some of the art items and um, here we've got uh, information out about Bristol uh, Beaufort and uh, some of the fragments of the actual aircraft. And on this side, a range of helicopters, and uh, this one actually signed by some of the crew, I guess. And at the top again, the cube at the top, with a beautifully made model of uh, uh, seeking the, the world of airfix. So it's just displaying some of the models. I'll just move through these fairly quickly. Trips, some of the various car ranges. Over here we've got the, uh, the Bond Bug, one that I do want to do. It's come out as one of the Vintage Classics range. Got the Armoured range here. Some aircraft. More ships. Then more of the uh, uh, military range. And again, some more models down here with the, uh, the Raptor at the end there. Really, really nicely displayed. There's table in the middle here, I guess this is for some exhibit at some point. Um, looks like going to be an airfield of some sort, but then underneath, cabinets full of beautifully made models. Each one of these is absolutely perfect. I'll just come around this side. There's one of the uh, sort of uh, Skeletric esque uh, airfix sets there. It's rather nice. More cars and more planes down there. And then uh, another continuation of the uh, airfix story. So this is this was in the previous museum. So this is uh, set number one. The Focus and Tractus is the very first uh, set, um, and it says it dated from 1949. And then we've got uh, a kit here from 1958. Do you remember the birds kits? I have a vivid memory of those. Um, those and the dinosaurs. Um, the flight deck over the back there, I had one of those as a child. It was the strangest thing. I used to control an aeroplane flying down a wire and get it to land on a flight deck. Um, yeah, so <laughs> quite entertaining, but uh, yeah, quite novel. I wonder if that's still in my parents' loft. Um, down the bottom here, a class seven lifeboat. We've got some of the characters that were in the previous museum, Doctor Who and uh, Wallace and Gromit, etc. Model kits of kings and queens and historical figures. As you can see here the uh, control modules for the Airfix um, uh, digital control system. Um, now I do have one of those, I plan to do a review on it at some point and maybe try and get it running, but uh, I, yeah, that could be an interesting video. More kits here, so this is 1960 to 1980. The Belfast, and there's some more kits down the bottom there. 
right and now into the world of railways. So we're going to start here, popular culture. We've got the Coca-Cola train sets. And uh, if you see the mallard there, the limited edition 80th anniversary. Railway children at the bottom there. Thomas Range. The uh, children's uh, junior range. I can't think what that's called. Obviously a couple of Hogwarts castles here and the Hogsmeade station from the Harry Potter range. We've got the Olympic train sets. The Beatles. And finally down the bottom here, the Toy Story. Right, this is Model Your World. So just various sets in here. So we've got to start with the uh, Obviously the Eurostar there, but also the Royal Dalton set that came with a uh, commemorative plate, if I remember rightly. So I've got here some of the range of the Hornby uh, TT120. Down the bottom here, it's quite, quite a nice touch. You see here Hornby, a model world. Obviously if you've seen the TV programme you would have seen these carriages go past. Um, we've got a couple of railroad um, wagons there, Hornby, a model world, and the 50th anniversary of Hornby Railways top here, a few, a few of the locos, beautiful, and again the TT 120 on the middle shelf here, uh, toy trains at the bottom, you see the cutaway of these locos um, showing the DCC chips, and a uh, little bit of information there about the uh, DC 7000 sound chip, some of the one-to-one -one collection, and the purple commemorative train and at the top here, the live steam locos. I've got one of these without the uh, body on there. We can go showing the complexity of these models. They really are something quite special. But an absolute nightmare to control. We've got uh, a couple of Horn Hornby uh, O-Gage locos in here. And obviously the uh, 1920s clockwork train. Some Hornby 00 sets, and obviously the uh, Plunger Princess with the banana coaches, which uh, I've done a review on. If you have a look on the uh, on the channel, you'll find that. We've got again another couple of Rovex models down the bottom there, Trying Pullman and 9F. Coming up to here, this beautiful Princess Elizabeth from 1937 and its corridor coach. Some Hornby 00 sets, rather nice. And again, some more locos down the bottom here. We've got Trying Railway set here. And coming down, Caprello, the uh, Deltic, you see over the back there. And the trying, first trying rocket and some of the original TT range and then just a few different versions of locos at the bottom there from sort of 1992-1995 era again staying with the trend we've got a how it's made cabinet research tooling manufacture 3D design running samples and the packaging and artwork you can see there the turbo motive new release and then I'm going to go the other way so final product down there the turbo motive the artwork as it's produced and finally the prototyping all on the turbo motive there and then in the again in the center I do like the way that the sort of display themes are running through each section but this nice uh, again the glass box with a full range of the Fry and Scotsman merchandise including the uh, latest 00 limited edition models at the top here. Very nicely done. And then this side we've got uh, the centenary models. So the uh, Merchant Navy class. We've got the re-release um, O-Gage Loco. And over here the uh, Evening Star. Packet down the bottom there. And uh, the Mallard set that was released in, 2000, in 2020, sorry. So of course, just tucked down the side here is the re-released Rocket. 
I'm talking of the rocket at the top here is the R100 three and a half inch gauge live steam Hornby rocket with its associated coach. Right now, finally in this area, they've got some rather nice model railways. Lovely size layout here. Let me just pan around so you can see. Very nice. Beautiful coronation yeah. Scott on the track on this raised level. There's a canal. Wow. Looks so real, doesn't it? Yeah. huge layout is there on one side and then the centre of the room we've got this one we've just come over here And then just here, we've got a uh, TT120 layout. Thank 
Right, and then the final section of the museum is the corgi. So, uh, again, the corgi story. Starting here, I'll just pan back a little bit so you get a feel for the place. My toy here. Corgi toys. Indeed, there's the, uh, the Batmobile. I keep telling the story about the little thing on the front of it. Various corgi uh, lorries and wagons there. We've got some of the trams. Very rare Corby models here. The Bond Buck in the middle there. Again, some metalware. Bits and pieces. The Corby High Lift. And the Combine there, the Rocket Launcher. The uh, JPS car. I mean, can you imagine kids playing with uh, a car with cigarette advertising on it these days? And then down the bottom there. More of the limited edition corgi sets. This side we've got the world of corgi. So uh, the a aviation archive. Some of the trucks at the bottom there. More of the aviation archive. I think I did, um, I've done one of these on the channel, um, a short Sunderland I think it was. The beautiful models. Vanguards. And uh, more of the buses and trams at the bottom there. More vanguards at the top here. And some very vintage corgi at the bottom. Vanguards here, and some of the more modern corgi range, and then again keeping with the theme, how it's made. CAD, LiDAR scanning, 3D printing, modelling the components. We've got built there on engineering samples, more engineering samples, and the components that are assembled for the final model. PP samples, pre-production samples, and the packaging design, and finally a little display there on the aviation archive. Again with the theme, there's a glass display cabinet in the middle, got some of the larger aviation archive models along the bottom there. Some of the uh, Vanguard dioramas. And then round this side, some of the various sets. We've got the Italian job, Vanguard's Italian job there, Vauxhall, Batmobiles, heavy haulage. I've not seen that one before. That's a new one to me. And uh, the Corky Collector, the uh, Omnibus there. And then right up in the centre here, we have uh, the fairground attractions range. So uh, just walking around, we've got the gallopers in the middle there. And as I mentioned before, you know, Carter's Steam Fair, my, my passion for the Steam Fair, they do have a set of these gallopers with Carter's on there. And also um, one of these uh, traction engines with, again with Carter's on there. Not in this display though, unfortunately. Anyway, film and television. So the range here of the James Bond cars. Wallace and Gromit, The Beatles, James Bond, Stingray and Captain Scarlet, Star Trek, look at those packaged corgi models down the bottom there, fantastic. And then uh, James Bond, Harry Potter, and some of the other wagons there, 40 Towers, Doctor Who, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. In the centre, the Triumph motorbike.
yeah, all in all, very, very impressed. And the shop as well has been completely relayed out, so scale electrics along this wall here, all of the range. Got the beautiful Daytona triple pack there. In the corner here, the uh, poker or poacher kits. So uh, if you were interested, the uh, JPS uh, Lotus 72, if you want one of those, £789 for the kit. Military vehicles and aircraft, all in the airfix range. More airfix kits here. Some of the scale electric sets. Back to the future scale electrics. Other bits and pieces there. Some of the uh, Hornby railway sets. More Hornby. This bit in the middle here is, uh, if you remember in the old shop, they used to have a corner with all reduced items. Well, that's still here. It's in the middle of the shop now. Corgi down here. Some of the uh, aviation archive on the wall. Lots of, obviously, lots of Hornby accessories. few bits and pieces here. What have we got? Delta there for £65. And a few other bits and pieces that uh, this is in the reduced area. Let me just come around this way. Got the Hornby TT120 down the side here and then some of the other wagons and uh, accessories. A range of uh, Built models and aircraft down there, full size uh, trotters, independent traders, the three wheel wagon, the center of the room. Yeah, all in all, very impressed. Very impressed indeed. Nice shop. Big boy in here, £478. And uh, the cafe has been completely uh, repainted, looks fantastic. Yeah, the whole place, very, very impressed. Very well done. So just while I'm here, um, this is quite, uh, you know, if you're into the hobby, the Hornby offices here, um, this is the old Margate factory, uh, quite iconic and uh, if you have a look on my channel I bought a kit off of eBay, well I'll put a quick caption in the uh, in, in the video when I'm editing, um, you know some, some uh, chap was making these as model kits and uh, I've actually got this building sitting on one of my layouts, uh, I just thought I'd show that to you, quite an iconic building if you're into the hobby. Right so just finally before I wrap up this video with a conclusion I've just taken a walk up the car park to the building next door and this here, uh, these old warehouses here which was part of the Hornby factory um, is being transformed into a railway museum I'm sure a lot of you will know that um, this is going to be the one-to-one -one collection um, currently in the building I think Bitten is still in there they've definitely got a Eurostar um, they've got the Pullman coach um, various other bits and pieces already in you know being stored in there yeah so various bits and pieces are stored in here and uh, originally it was just used as a storage center um, to store the locos in there and it is going to transform into a proper railway attraction 
and uh, since I was here last this brick structure on the end here has uh, either been rebuilt or repointed it looks uh, completely different to what it did before I'll just go over here so we can see anything I don't think here it's gonna be very visible yeah no it's it's uh, you can see how overgrown it is down here still a lot of work to do but yeah be quite interesting when it finally does open and it uh, can't be too far away now well I have to say I'm really really impressed um, when I heard that uh, the old Hornby Visitor Centre was being uh, you know refurbished I was a little bit skeptical because I was thinking well what else could you do other than what's already there and I took a day off work today to come down on the opening day just so I could see what had been done kind of expecting to see you know maybe some new cabinets and a little bit of painting here and there I'd heard that everything had changed but uh, yeah very very skeptical and wow wow it really has changed now the presentation in there is probably just on the right level it's not too detailed it's not too um, uh, skimming over the surface there's lots of items in there. there's lots of new items as well which is nice to see and the way it's presented with the themes running through sort of the different uh, you know the construction areas and um, the archive areas and also you know in each each of the four Corgi FX Hornby etc areas those glass boxes that are in there that just sort of highlight the pinnacle of the different ranges really really nicely done so uh, yeah well done to Hornby anyway with that said if you do enjoyed the video please do give it a thumbs up and if you have a look on my channel there is a review of the previous Hornby visitor center for comparison and lots of other things about model railways model making and basically all kinds of things because my interests are quite wide and varied so if it does interest you please do subscribe you do me a massive favor so finally thank you ever so much for watching and i'll catch you on the next one